Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today we continue the Heavy Metal series with something a little bit more devout. What up, mini family? Let's address a comment that I think I'm gonna get right off the bat. The series is called the Heavy Metal Marines, but you're painting a sister of battle. They're not a Marine. To that, I have to say... <laughs> All right, with that out of my system, let's tackle this SLB. What an unfortunate acronym. It's like Slaves to Darkness, STDs. I got my STDs and my SOBs. I put a poll out on my YouTube community to see which chapter, I mean order, you guys wanted me to paint, and you picked the Order of the Sacred Rose. I actually wanted this one to win because I haven't done any white power armor. Oh, that's going to be a dangerous phrase. Let's just say uh, white armor. Yeah, I haven't done any white armor in any previous episode of Effie Metal Marines. So this will be a fun change of pace. All right, let's get it on. <laughs> We'll be painting St. Catherine's Spirit from the Triumph of St. Catherine's boxed set that GW recently released. Every project starts with assembly, which for me is a very relaxing stage. It's easy unless you make it hard with conversions and whatnot. I use a variety of tools in this stage. Sharp side cutters to remove the pieces from the sprue, an X-Acto knife to clean up various mold lines and remove chunks of sprue still hanging around and some round files for curved edges. The round files are nice when you're scared that you'll cut into the part when cleaning it with an X-Acto knife, like on the inside of a curve. This is more of a concern when you're using a fresh sharp blade. For gluing the pieces together, I use Tamiya Thin Cement, which welds the plastic together nicely. This model is split down the middle, which would create some annoying gaps, so I tried to clamp her shut to make sure the two pieces were as stuck together as they could be while curing. This also created a little bead of squeeze-out of melted plastic that I could later sand down to make a nice flush seam. I kept the body and head and shield separate to make painting a little bit more simple. If you wanted to be hardcore, you could keep all the parts separate, but I would only do that if I was trying to win a painting competition or something. Because a lot of this mini will end up white, I thought it'd be smart to prime it white. It's a 300 IQ move right there, using white primer for a white power armor. Damn. <laughs> Just uh, waiting for the email to get on the heavy metal team, GW. After that, I airbrushed on my initial base coat of an off-white color. This was a white mixed with a tiny amount of blue. Later on, I wanted pure white edge highlights to show up on the power armor, so my main base coat should not be pure white. The next step was to start glazing in some blue shadows, which may sound a little strange for an heavy metal scheme, but stay with me. GW has a wide variety of effort levels they apply to their paint jobs. For standard rank and file troops, they put in less effort than someone like an important character. For this paint scheme, I wanted to try something more complicated, and part of that complication was working in some soft shadows via glazing. You need to really go slow here because white takes color so incredibly easily. High amounts of dilution are necessary to have it not turn into a streaky mess. I'd even consider using some kind of glaze medium, like the one that Vallejo makes. If you're confused about where to apply shadows, having an understanding of volumetric lighting will help. I'll link a video about that and also the technique of glazing in the description of this video for you to check out should you need it. After that's done, I'll start recess shading with a very similar desaturated blue color. This step is necessary because our edge highlight won't be significant enough to bring out all the lovely detail on this model. This paint scheme is looking awfully attractive. You know what else is attractive? Magnets, which is a perfect segue into our sponsor. Cobalt Keep is a miniature accessory brand. Their bread and butter focuses around the usage of magnets. Cobalt Keep sells a variety of base sizes that you might find in typical games. But what's special about these bases is the magnet well on the underside, which allows for easy installation of a magnet with a little super glue. Now your man is able to stick to any metal surface, such as a figure case or the Cobalt Keep painting handle. This painting handle comes equipped with a metal disc so you can attach and detach models to it while painting. The locking ridges on the underside of their bases ensure that the model doesn't unintentionally rotate while painting. The locking ridges also make these bases more bend resistant than their competitors. 
The painting handle plugs nicely into a large hexagonal stand that makes the whole assembly very tip resistant. If you're painting a small accessory that doesn't have a base attached to it, you can add in Cobalt Keep's accessory kit, which comes with a cork add-on to pin with as you normally would. Not only are these products wonderfully convenient, but Cobalt Keep is also giving the viewers of this channel 20% off their product range until February 29th with the coupon code MINIAC used at checkout. All their stuff will be linked in the description below. Thank you for sponsoring YouTubers Cobalt Keep. Now back to the video. I probably should have done the recess shading first and then the glazing second because it's hard to fix problems that occur near areas where there's shadow. I don't have a perfect color to match that but I just mixed one up that was close enough and it worked out for fixing problems that cropped up during the recess shading. Now onto the last step of the white armor, some edge highlighting. This model has a lot of edges obscured by decorative metal trim, so there aren't actually that many. I was actually mentally preparing myself. All right, you can do this. You can do this. Woo! But there weren't too many edges. Most of them were on the backpack and a few in the torso and the feet. A little tip when edge highlighting, instead of mixing your white paint with water to thin it, mix it with white ink. This way, it's still fairly opaque, but it's also nice and thin so it flows from your brush. Being a lady of the sacred row, she wears black vestments with a red interior. My first step was to pick out my colors, but funky style. After I shook my tuchus for the camera, which was totally my wife's idea, I swear, the real first step was to slap on those base coats nice and slowly. Painting over white is a little deceptive. You'd think it'd go on faster than over something like black, but to reach full opacity, you need a few layers. So take your time, just like with anything else, and go slowly. Let's tackle the black first. When it comes to heavy metal paint schemes, black is pretty much exclusively edge highlighted. So I started with a dark gray edge highlight that was quite thick in terms of the line width, and then progressed up from there with brighter and brighter grays getting thinner and thinner. If you need help with edge highlighting, I'll link a guide about it in the description of this video. Next up, we'll continue with the red interior. I took a similar approach to the red as I did with the black. I started with a dark red and layered a brighter and brighter red up. Instead of doing exclusively edge highlighting, I covered more of the previous layer up with my subsequent layers. Some of my final layers were bordering on pink. I used them sparingly as to not give the impression that my cloth was pink. Don't forget to highlight the little button slots as well. For the shield, I wanted to do something special. The original model comes with sculpted detail on her shield, but I wanted to freehand the sacred rose icon on it. I started by scraping the detail off, trying to preserve the outer rim and the purity seal, but it became increasingly obvious to me that I wasn't going to get the finish that I wanted. So I just removed all the detail and sanded the shield with higher and higher grits until I got a nice finish. I then took some milliput and epoxy sculpt and mixed them together to combine their properties and sculpted the trim on as best as I could. I like the sandability of Milliput, and I also like the rubberiness of epoxy sculpt for an application that's small and thin like this. Using some metal sculpting tools and color shapers helps to get the shape that I wanted. Once it was cured, I was able to true up the shape with some sanding. I liked the original fleur-de-lis on the shield, so I wanted to add them back, but I'm not confident in my ability to sculpt them. So I busted out my 3D printer, and with a little bit of help from my friend Danny from 3D Printed Tabletop, Are we, are we recording? Ha <laughs> shit! You are very welcome, Scott. I was able to print little fleur-de-lis. These were also a little bit chunky, so I filed them down to better match the width of the trim that I had sculpted. Lastly, I searched through my newly organized bits bins and found a purity seal that I could attach to the shield. 
Now, after all that work, we're back to square one with a flat shield and we can start our free hand. Step one is to pray to your altar of Richard Gray. All right, now that you've done that, let's start hashing out our basic shape. Eventually, our icon will be red, but I start with pink because at this stage, if I make any mistakes, pink is nominally easier to cover up with white as opposed to red. I started with the center circle, making sure I was centered on the shield before proceeding, and then one at a time, I created the heart-like flower petals. I would occasionally come in with some white to true up the shape. Eventually, I moved on to red and stayed within my established lines, filling in the shapes. You could stop here, but I wanted to do some shading and some highlighting with these shapes, making them brighter toward the top of each shape and darker toward the bottom. The hardest part of freehand is establishing the outline, but once you got that, you can color within the lines, highlighting and shading like you would if it was sculpted detail. I then started painting the other details, like the metal trim, which we'll go over soon. I was pretty happy with the result on this shield, and this is definitely something you could do. We're not painting the Mona Lisa, it's just simple shapes. I took a few liberties with the paint scheme at this point, considering there isn't really a box art for this particular order to follow. I started with a base coat of a dark purple for the leather and mixed in gray and white to desaturate it and also brighten it up for my further highlights. Admittedly, the gray was sort of redundant because white also desaturates color as you mix it in. For the holster, I went a little wacky. I never know what to do with large flat surfaces, so I striped down some thin lines to imply some kind of texture going on. For the face, I took a step back and did some research. I have an old book that goes over some heavy metal paint schemes in fairly rigorous detail when compared to some of their other media. I noticed a lot of their faces started with a fairly dark base coat, so I wanted to give that a shot. I mixed the magenta and a brown as my first base coat and applied a few thin coats. I then mixed in some flesh tone and created a gradient of colors and slowly layered up more and more flesh tones. I focused on the areas like the brow that peeks through her bangs, the cheekbones, the portion above her mouth, her nose, and chin. Eventually, I started to work in some whites and yellows. The yellow is there to keep the color saturated. I find if I exclusively highlight with white, the skin can tend to look a little dead toward the end. Once the flesh was done, I started to work on the eyes. I made sure that the original base coat was mostly undisturbed, and I applied some off-white to the eyes, which are nicely sculpted on this model. 
I made sure that some of the original dark tones stuck around to act as separation between the eyes and the face. I then dotted in some irises with a darker color. I actually messed up the right eye a few times, but because I was working with fairly thin color, I could just keep retrying. Don't be afraid to mess up. Just go slowly and use thin paint and you can give it a few shots. The hair was painted in the same way as the black vestments we did earlier. If I'm being honest, the face looks a little cave woman-y. I think it's because the lines running from her nose to her bottom lip are really dark, which enunciates her mouth and the area under her nose, making her look like the missing link. With female faces, it's particularly important to make their features soft, so stuff like this doesn't happen. So I probably should have used not so dark a color in that particular area. This mini has a lot of metals littered across it. I started with silver. I actually mixed some silver with black contrast paint to get a nice dark starting point and looking at the box art for inspiration, I base coated the silver elements. At this stage, I didn't put any silver on the small rivets or buttons on her vestments. Next up, I applied a bright silver as a layer, making sure to retain the dark spots around the rivets and other details to get some definition in those spots. Now's the time where I started to paint all the rivets and buttons. I didn't really like the result this yielded. I'm pretty much always dissatisfied with my TMM at this scale. But I moved on to the gold. I started with a base coat of a nice rich gold color, followed up by a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss, which is nice because it maintains the glossiness of the metallics, whereas a normal wash would kind of kill the shine. I then applied two highlights by mixing in a bright silver into my gold and layering them on one after the other. In certain circumstances, the wash wasn't strong enough to bring good definition, so I used some acrylic paint and some recessed shading to bring more definition in, like on the wings on her shoulder. For the base, I resorted to my favorite little resin bricks. I glued on enough with super glue to cover the entire surface of the base, and then I trimmed the excess and sanded the perimeter so it was nice and flush. I then did some battle damage by scraping and carving with my X-Acto knife. I also attached some rocks and debris to the base to imply more battle damage. I primed this base in white and I painted it by applying washes to each brick, browns and yellows and red to get a nice variety of color. I then smacked some dry pigments on and super glued the spirit of St. Catherine on and finished it off with a nice black base rim. And that was the order of the sacred rose complete. When people talk about heavy metal painting, they often use terms like clean to describe the paint job. And while that is an apt term, I think a term like intentional is better. Everything is there because the painter wanted it to be there. Mistakes are virtually non-existent. Not everything on the model might be artistically considered as quote unquote good, but it doesn't make it onto the model by accident. While this isn't the case for my model, there are some clear mistakes. I think I got reasonably close. I did enjoy painting this gal more than the standard Space Marine, largely due to the lack of edge highlighting and the addition of some fun glazing. What do you guys think of my result? Would you have interpreted the Effie Metal style in a different way? Let me know. Thanks for watching my video guys, it's sticking all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. As an announcement, John and I are teaching a class in Los Angeles, California in the Burbank area. If you want to get a seat to that class, you can find information about it linked in the description below. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways you can do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of cool rewards, like a Discord server where you can hang out with me any day of the week and talk about your miniature painting projects or your favorite kind of grindcore metal. Other benefits include early release content and also suggesting topics for me to make videos on. Other ways to support the channel is also buying gear that I recommend in the description using Amazon affiliate links and also buying merchandise or the vampire miniature and digital class that I made for it. Don't forget about the sponsor for this video, Cobalt Keep. All stuff is linked in the description for them as well. Subscribe or die! But most importantly, don't forget to pay my minis!